I'm zoned from the start. Wow. What? So okay, hello everyone. I need your help. Say yeah. Yeah. Say yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Say uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question, and I would appreciate if you would respond with yeah, yeah. And then we'll do that a couple times. And then the comeback will be, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> The, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That'll come later. Okay. All right. <sighs> Have you got the spirit? Yeah. Have you got the spirit? Have you got spirit? Well, let me hear it with your voice. Say, uh, 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 uh. Go. Uh, 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 uh. Have you got spirit? Have you got spirit? Have you got spirit? Well, let me hear it with your voices. Let me hear it with your voices. Let me hear it with your claps. Have you got spirit? Have you got spirit? Have you got spirit? Well, let me see you with your shoulder. Let me see you with your knees. Let me hear it with your claps. Let me hear it with your snaps. Have you got spirit? Have you got spirit? Have you got spirit? Well, let me see you with your head. Let me see you with the elbow. Let me hear it with your feet. Let me hear it with your kiss. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's about spirit. Everybody is spirit. You know, you've heard the saying. We're spiritual beings in a human uh, experience or a um, physical. We're spiritual beings in a physical experience. And everybody has this. You know, at whatever level you have, at whatever rate of assimilation you have for your physical experience through the spiritual body, everybody has it. And I mean, now one big example, and my wife can attest to this, and many other people I've talked to can attest this, Spirit affects you whether you know it or not. If you go to Washington Square Park in New York City in Manhattan, there's a part of the park that we don't go to. That's the park that has all the chess tables. It's also the side of the park that has all the drug dealers because that ground was where they did the public hangings. So it's kind of weird there. There's still 20,000 bodies from the yellow fever epidemic underneath Washington Square. So it feels kind of weird. You know, it feels kind of weird. And, you know, spirit is always there. So how are you going to deal with it? You can't escape it. I mean, think about this. What's the stereotypical? You go in the house. It's dark. It's empty. And you hear noises. What should you do? GTFO. Do what, do what Jordan Peele said. Don't go in the door. Don't go up the stairs. No. Show some respect. This is how I had my, this is home training. They were there first. Let them be. You got that. I'll, see, I'll get a mortgage somewhere else, you know. But this is, people deal with this stuff. But sometimes there are extenuating circumstances in relation to dealing with spirit. For an example, my daddy, when he was real little, about four or five years old, he got sick. He took sick, as he said. And the way he described it to me, his head swelled up. They, he said he called himself the waterhead baby. So he didn't know what to do. They took him to the hospital for observation. They gave him his blanket, they gave him some toys, they put him in there. And he was scared to death. He's like, this? Big, 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 swelled up, didn't know what's going on. 
and you know, you know what happens in hospitals. That's what people go to, to die. So my daddy's in this all by himself. It's late at night. And the door opens. And it's this old lady. Grizzled. Shrunken. But she smiles. She said, hello, Ernest. I'm here to get you. Come on with me. And Daddy just looks at her. Uh, no, thank you, ma'am. Boy, don't you know to respect your... Come, come on, let's get out of here. He just shakes that big water head of his. He's not, the eyes get bigger. He's not going anywhere. He's like, what? Ernest, come with me right now. No, ma'am. Fine. But let me tell you, you're not coming with me now, but let me tell you, I'm not going home empty-handed. So she bends down and scoops up all his toys and goes back out the door. Next morning, he wakes up. His head is back down. And his toys are gone. Spirit came, but he didn't go. Now his mother, my grandma Charlie, Spirit came to her too. I know this because her wishes were fulfilled. She passed right where she told us she wanted to pass. She was surrounded by all her friends, playing cards, having a good time, and she just went, <sighs> and was gone. And when they went to her room to collect all her effects, they opened the closet, empty. She had given away everything already. So with stuff like this from my daddy and his mama, when things start happening to me, I can't say no. It kind of comes with the lineage, you know? But I don't appreciate it sometimes, but I have to accept it. Now, the, the only house I remember is the house on Rittenhouse Street. Built in 1920, huge pine tree out in front. I had the front room with a window, a little diamond-shaped window in my closet that looked right out on that pine tree. And we had surplus furniture. I had this old army surplus, heavy wood bunk beds that, that my father got. And so I'm in the bunk bed, laying there. I'm about four, five years old, laying there in the dark. And the closet is open that much. And out come the shadow people. They come out. They're like tunes, flat, two-dimensional. And they come out, and they slide along the wall of my bedroom. They never cross. They just come out. And I'm not, they don't give off menace, but this is, this is very disturbing for me. So I have my daddy take a blanket, tuck it in under the mattress on the top bunk, so when these shadow people would come out, I couldn't see them, they couldn't see me, so we, everybody had their individual space. And that, that worked for me. And uh, as I grew and became more in my body, as people do as they get further away from birth canal, and they deal more with earth canal, uh, that ability to see those faded. Just as my ability to lay there on the living room couch and get out of my body and fly around faded. But I'm still connected because at the same time, these things are fading away. 
I'm turning into a percussionist. I'm taking all these Quaker Oats oatmeal boxes, and I have this array of hand drums for me that I keep in the cupboard, in the, in the corner in the cupboard in the kitchen. I'm four years old, I'm five years old, this is 1962. Where did I see people playing hand drums? Somewhere in the ether. I've got my drums and stuff like that. I'm, I'm rocking it. So I'm comfortable there. I, I've accepted that. So 10 years later, when my brother and sister-in-law get married, and they bring the chief priest of the Akans of America down from New York to do the ceremony, and they have the drums, and they got the chants, and they got the, the cigars, and they got the music going, and they got the priestesses with the short hair, dressed all in white with the consecrated beads, and they have the effoon white powder all over their bodies. This is like, yeah, I can feel this. I feel this music play, and the voices come up, and spirit comes, some comes up, some comes down, comes shoots through. I'm loving this. I'm connected. This is real deep. And then, of course, five years, six years after that, I'm in the Bronx, in a basement in the Bronx at a bembe, Afro-Cuban Yoruba ceremony, with my people from the, from the dance company. And I'm, <laughs> I'm playing the bell, I'm singing the coro, I'm doing the dancing, and I'm feeling this imminent spirit just invade the place. And it swirls and swirls, and I can, I can almost smell who it's going to go into and who is going to bring the voice of the deity down. And I'm loving this is this is what's been in my in me my whole life. And I'm loving it. And I'm in there. And then all of a sudden comes this doubt to the legitimacy of my feeling all this. Because, I mean, these ceremonies are for people who have paid big bucks to get their head shaved, to get bathed for a week in, in the herbs, to have the prayers prayed over them 24-7, to have eaten the sacred food, to have restricted themselves in so many ways, and they've attuned themselves to that deity. And now they have the right to be ridden, to be at tomb. And me, who am I is? I'm this little yellow dude from DC who's feeling it come, knows who it's going to go to, can smell what deity is coming. And I'm saying, mm. But then, spirit comes. Because I'm still playing and I'm thinking and feeling getting smaller and smaller. And I look up, and right there is Obatala, you know, the great ancestor, the owner of dreams, the one in white, in the body of a full-figured brown woman with a short afro, with a St. Uh, St. Patty's Day green polyester dress on, with a hand on a hip, smeared with the sacred white power, powder just staring me in the heart. And in this energy that comes between us is complete knowledge of all that's going on in my soul. And I feel my, just everything open up in response to that knowing, that knowing look. And I try to change the subject by trying to do some kind of traditional bow while I'm playing the drums, and it doesn't work because Obatala steps up and steps up, and the arms go around my head, and I get pulled down, and I hear that heartbeat, and slowly get worked to the ground like a yearling at a rodeo. Boom! And I'm on the ground, and I'm held down there. For, until I get the message. <laughs> and then I'm held back up. And as I get back up, all that 
I'm not legit because I didn't get Goyares and I haven't been consecrated and I haven't sat with the thing. Because I have lineage. I have my life experience. And the Spirit came, and took me down and lifted me up and said, you know, go forth, chillax. Now, wow, man, here I am. But when I think of now, when I think of those shadow people, I'm reminded of the boy in the sixth sense, you know, so troubled, so scarce. I see dead people, <laughs> you know, and he's there at home in the dark. And this girl, just, just about his age, shows up and she's spewing vomit at him and he's <gasps> crying, he runs. But she keeps coming back again and again and again. And eventually, he grows and counsels and settles in his fear and stops and listens to her and finds out she has a message for him. And he has medicine that she needs. Symbiosis has to happen. And he listens, and I'm feeling much better now. And she's able to move on. So me, in the bunk bed, the closet open, What might I have heard or learned from the shadow people if I hadn't had that barrier put up? My ability to communicate with them and to fly and do those other things may have lasted longer, may have just kept growing. Wow. And maybe my having to go to all these ceremonies and go to the church and the mosque and the ashram and the temple and the woods, maybe some of that would have been curtailed because I didn't lose that connection. But we're here now and that happened. And I was in the dark. But you know, darkness is not so bad. Because when you're on the edge of darkness, that's when you can catch a glimmer of light.